What's up, everyone? Eddie Mercado here with BloodyElbow.com, and I'm about to speak with George Sullivan ahead of his UFC on Fox 20 bout against Hector Urbina. Now, of course, this fight will take place in the UFC's welterweight division, and we're going to give George a call and kind of find out, you know, what he's been doing since his last bout and kind of how his preparation has been going for this fight and find out if he's still working with UFC veteran Kurt Pellegrino. Hello. Mr. Sullivan. What's up, man? How you doing? Eddie Mercado here with Bloody Elbow. What's going on, bro? Oh, not too much, not too much. Uh, you, got a, you got a big old fight on your hands coming up. Hi. Yeah, man, I can't wait. Can't wait. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a little bit since we've seen you last. Um, you uh, you you're three and two in the UFC thus far. Pretty good record. Um, you've had uh, outstanding uh, TKO or KO finish over Igor Araujo. I hope I said that right. And uh, yeah, yeah you, you're looking to tie it all together. So, uh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So what have you been doing as of late? Are you still training with Kurt Pellegrino? Yeah, still with Kurt. Uh, I've been traveling more for sparring. You know, basically the last fight, you notice I had 20 something fights in my career. I've never been knocked out. I've, barely, I've never even really been knocked down. I right. got caught thinking because, you know, Kurt wasn't there my last fight. He was on vacation. I had my other coach who I love and who's been with me for a while giving me a game plan and basically got into my head a little bit. I feel like I was being controlled more than I was fighting off of instinct. Mm -hmm. And for that split second, when he told me to throw that inside leg kick, I stopped and then I backed up a little bit Then I got cold clocked by him. I honestly feel like it was a live and learn lesson that you have to go in there and fight off of instinct and not fight the way your coaches tell you to fight. Because I'm the one that got myself in the UFC, basically. So if you're being controlled like a puppet, it's going to backfire. So I've been sparring more, doing more live, doing a lot more instinct than like game plan type training. Last camp just wasn't smooth. Okay. So. All right. So you know. you're you're three and two in the UFC, and like you said, you got yourself into into the UFC now. Are you still on your initial contract, or are you have you started a new contract? <laughs> Second contract. The first contract was a four fight deal. They gave me a five fight deal after that. So I have three fights left. So this is after this one I would have two more left. Uh, okay. But I think I think if I win the next one or when I win the next one, they'll redo it again. They they basically I think you get a new contract before it's over because you'll be worth more money if you ride it out. So they try to get you sooner, I think the way it works. Okay. Yeah, I'm not really sure, but I think I got two left of my contract after this one. Okay, now you said you're still training with Kurt Pellegrino a little bit. Now, are you um, yeah. are you still a purple belt? No. You know what's funny? I was a purple belt with Kurt for three and a half years. He oh, wouldn't wow. give me my brown. I was actually a four-stripe purple belt for three years. Oh, really? So, basically, I had my purple belt for five years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was pretty funny. I got my brown belt. Right after the last fight, uh, it was kind of funny, too, because um, I never expected to get it. Because mm -hmm. I'm really more of a no-gi guy than I am sure. a gi guy, but I do train in the gi. So basically, he's like, all right, well, I'm just going to punish you until you get a submission win in, in fighting. Uh, <laughs> then I'll give you a brown belt. And I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> okay. So I'm actually a brown belt under him now. Okay, awesome. Well, it's definitely about the journey. It's not about ranks or, or any kind of titles. Yeah. Or so it's definitely about the techniques and it's about the journey. Um, so do you occasionally throw the gi on or are you just... Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I do in the off-season. I haven't had the gi on in the last three weeks because I've been doing so much fight training. Right. But I'll start to do it probably next week just to sweat to cut more weight. So basically... I don't like to get too reliable on the gi because you can't grab it in a fight and it does set up bad habits for fighting. It makes your jujitsu a lot sharper, don't get me wrong, but grabbing onto the gi, I just feel like position-wise, if I can keep you down without the gi, it's a lot harder. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think it's easier to stall on the gi, so I try not to wear it as much when I'm fighting. Okay. Okay, now let's, let's back up a little bit. Now, um... 
and 2015, uh, you, you started out with a fight against Tim Means, in which uh, it was a tough third round defeat via arm triangle. And um, I believe afterwards you were saying how you kind of felt like, you know, the pace of the fight really tested your conditioning, and you, you feel like that was an area you needed to improve. Now, yeah. as yeah. as of as of late, we've uh, we've seen we've seen Tim Means pop for uh, PEDs. Now, do you think um, Means was on something? Maybe you know that that kind of made him push that kind of pace during that fight. Maybe I mean I I, I don't I'm not gonna call him anything I I really don't know what he was taking I think it's kind of funny that several guys all got popped for the same type of supplement you know the first thing that I did as a professional everything that I was taking I had approved I told them what I was taking I told the UFC I've been on the same stuff all the vitamins and supplements I take from NutriShop have been with me for the last. 10 fights, so I know I'm safe. You put something new in your body, you start it for the best, you're putting yourself at risk. So was he probably on the same exact shit? Absolutely. I mean, did he know it was bad at the time? Maybe not. But I don't think he just randomly chose that one that one fight camp right after mine to get caught on it. Because they started drug testing more after I fought him. Yeah, that was you know that was the last time we were allowed to use banners. The last time we were allowed to use that was actually the last banner fight in the UFC. I was on it, so there was no more Hayabusa shorts and shit like that. So I think when you sat it took over, boom, there you go, you get caught. Mm. But, is is that know, a fight you would want to get back? A hundred percent, hundred fucking percent. Excuse That's my French. I you know. I just feel like, again, with him, the change of opponents in two weeks fucked with my head. Again, I'm sorry if I can't curse. No, no, go for um, it. Say, hey, let it uh, fly. You know, I, I was supposed to fight another guy, and then two weeks before the fight, they're like, you're fighting Tim Me. I hadn't had a fight in six and a half months. Then he had four fights within eight months in the UFC, which is crazy. So basically, I saw a seasoned guy who was fighting every fucking month and a half, mm -hmm. and then they give me a guy... Right off the bat, two weeks later, I was training for a righty. All the the entire time of six and a half weeks, I'm training for a five foot ten righty to give me a six foot two lefty. But it was a last minute replacement, so I, I understand. You know, I think the, the amount of things that went wrong for that fight. Just, uh, I would like to get a full camp against him and and go for it. Okay. Now, would you want that more so than? Um, the Alexander Yokolev fight? Yeah, I just got caught with Alexander. I just got caught with him. I honestly think I could beat him uh, if I if I would have had the right game plan, take him down. You know, he took me down and I got right back up like it was nothing. I should have just took him down. But, you know, again, with my coach telling me no takedowns and things like that in the first round, it basically got in my head so bad being told what to do. I, I really, I just feel like I got caught with Alexander. You know what I mean? Right. Tim Tim started to, to take off in that, you know, he started to pick me apart more. He did start to win the fight. So I feel like I would like to test myself and go after him first. I can always get out of Alexander again, I think. Okay. So the Tim means me would mean more to me. Okay, now, you know, like you're saying, you know, Tim Means was a Southpaw, uh, Dominic Waters, Southpaw, uh, Alexander <laughs> Yakolev. Southpaw, uh, well, you know, you're finally getting an orthodox fighter in Hector Urbina. Now, yeah, uh, are, are, are you relieved? I'm so excited. Are you relieved? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, most guys fight a Southpaw once every couple of years. Here you go. You have me fight three of them in a row. I'm like, come on, guys. Give me a righty. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's tough, let alone on a short notice, you know? Yeah. Man. Yeah, I can't wait. So, um... What do you know about this guy, Urbina? Of course, he was on the Ultimate Fighter season 19. I mean, but, but yeah. what, do you, what do you think of him? What do you think of his style? And, and how does it exactly, how is it going to clash with your style? I think I'm more technical than he is. I think he's, he's a little wilder than I am. Um, he's a brawler type. He likes, I think he likes jujitsu a little bit more than I do. I feel like he's more of a submission guy. I'm more of a knockout guy. Um, Basically, I have no submissions because I've given up submissions and fights for the knockout. Uh, I just think we're a good, exciting matchup. I think you're going to have his wild 
swinging wide angle punching versus me coming in. I throw a little bit straighter than he does. Um, I think it's just going to make a good striking uh, or a very good grinding fight. I think either way it's going to be a good fight. Do you see it playing out as a striking battle on the feet? No, I think we're going to clinch. I really do. I think he moves forward too much and I move forward too much for it to be that back and forth striking battle. I see, I see it being a grind, to be honest with you. Because he's always pushing forward and so am I. So we're going to keep running into each other. It's like two bulls coming at each other. <laughs> okay, so in his last fight, he, he uh, lost a decision to Bartos Fabinski. Now, mm -hmm. you know, Fabinski, his, his whole MO was he came in, closed the distance, got the fight to the ground, and kept it there. Is, is that yeah. kind of the blueprint you're going to use for this? I, I mean, I think I think I'm just gonna try out muscle him and, and grind him. I, I hit a lot harder than the guy that Hector just what's his whatever his name is. I can't really say. Uh, Bartos Fabinski. Uh, yeah, I, I know I hit much harder than he does. So I don't see Hector if I do hit him get, like backing off. I see him just gonna. I think he's gonna keep trying to grab me to be honest. With you. Okay. So that's what I'm thinking. Well, how do you see it ending? What's your prediction? I'm going for a knockout as I always do. I'm uh, I'm hungry. And I'm mad. I, you know, not getting that second paycheck sucked. I'm I'm hungry. You know, you, we fight to get those to get that renewal contract. So basically, I have two fights to show them to keep me. So I'm swinging for the goddamn fences. I'm looking for a home run. Okay, awesome. Now, um, of course, you're looking for a contract extension, like you just said. But as far as opponent wise, you know, what would you want after Urbina? I would like. I mean, you know what stinks? I, I lose to Tim Means, he breaks top twenty. I lose to Alexander, he lose, he breaks top twenty. I've been so close to getting into the top twenty, it drives me friggin' insane. I was thirty two when I fought Tim Means, and they told me I would break top twenty if I beat Tim Means. And who does Tim Means fight right after that? Friggin' a top ten guy. He fights. Um, uh, with his face, Matt Brown. You know, I just want to get a top 20 guy and I want to redeem myself and get back in there because both of my losses are top, top 20 guys now. So, it's not like I'm losing to a lower ranked guy. I mean, Alexander was just supposed to fight uh, Ryan LaFleur, who was a top 20 guy. I think he's 12 or 13. And um, he just, uh, he backed out. So, I mean, that could have been my spot. So just try, you know, I just want to break top 20. That's, that's the next thing for me. So I want a top 20 guy. I don't care who the hell it is. Okay. Now, what are your thoughts on the welterweight division? Are you comfortable at this weight? Or have you thought about maybe moving to a different weight class? It's, I'm way too big for 55. Uh, I've tried it earlier in my career. And it just, you can see it in my face when I make 50, when I make 70. I'm very big bone. So it's like, I look like I'm dying when I go to 70. 85. The guys are massive. I would I would have to take some time off and bulk up. I've, I have twenty three fights at one seven. So it's like, <laughs> do I really want to change? Twenty two fights, twenty two fights at seven. Oh, actually, twenty one. I have twenty one fights at seventy. One fight at eighty five. Okay. Now, uh, you got any shout outs? Uh, any thank yous you want to give out? I just want to thank. Um, you know, Kurt Pellegrino, Tom Dowd from Impact Muay Thai, James Meal. I've been training with the current cage career champion, uh, Manny Wallow, a lot. I want to thank them guys for letting me come up and cross training with all the guys up North Jersey. Uh, Matt Jennings, the, the Lift in Point Pleasant. Um, Dan Fisher, uh, engineered MMA. Greg Hussey from Evolution Martial Arts. Um, Neutral Shop, all the sponsors that are on George Sullivan MMA. Uh, com, and then all my guys and all the other sponsors that are on my, my Facebook page. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking out the time. I know you're very busy. you got a huge fight coming up. Thanks, man. July yeah, 23rd, man. Hector Urbina, UFC on Fox 20. Good luck to you, sir. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. If you need anything else, just give me a call. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right, brother. All right, I'll thank you, sir. I appreciate you so Bye, much. Bye, bro. Peace. Bye. So there you have it, folks. George Sullivan getting ready to handle business at UFC on Fox 20. He's taking on Hector Urbina, trying to move up in the welterweight division and 
possibly get a contract extension. So tune in to find out. Until then, follow Bloody Elbow for all the latest event coverage, news, shows, whole nine yards. You can find me on Twitter at the Eddie Mercado, and be a good person.